So we've been doing Nomad videos for a year now and we've got a massive catalogue, over 50 videos here on YouTube and the courses of course. So what I want to do is up my game a little bit and start going into much more higher level um, uh, videos where I show you some of the tips and tricks if you're going to get to the next level. So what I want to look at here is five ways to improve your images and I'm going to show you how to make things monochrome, how to do a comic book look, curvature, dramatic lighting and then tone mapping and they're all things that you do towards the end of your design. So let's dive right in and have a look at five ways to make your images better. So we've got the piece that we've been working on and we want to now try different styles and graphic styles to make it really sing. So let's just start with this first one, which is making it monochromatic. So that's black and white. So we could have painted it black and white in the first place. That's one way that we could have done it, um, but we didn't. We've got this really detailed, textured, coloured creature. So we want to make it sing a little bit with the post-process uh, and focus on the, the, the monochrome idea. So if we go up here to our post-process and switch it on, which I think it already is on, everything's switched off. So we'll switch on max samples and full resolution so we know that they're right. Um, we don't need um, SSR reflection. You can put it on, but there's, there's nothing really that, that, that's needed for this particular instance. Um, that would be needed when we've got things to reflect into, like the floor. Um, and then ambient occlusion will make a big difference. You can see there it darkened those, those creases and the crevices. So ambient occlusion will use all the way through this. It's, it gives it a bit of life straight away so you'll see ambient occlusion everywhere in, in in your life it's you know it's something that we see every day and don't appreciate so wherever you've got the deepest darkest crevices and the light can't bounce around that's where ambient occlusion is is going to occur and you saw that there i turn it on and off you can see it takes a minute on this one because it's quite a large model it's 15 million polygons now but that's darkening the dark areas and that's and that's what we're all about here we wanted to make it look super realistic um with, with you know as if as if daylight's hitting it from the front so depth of field we we can put that on and off during this process and that is one of the things that we 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 really can use to make it look realistic but just for the moment again we'll leave it off so depth of field off leave bloom off and we go straight to tone mapping so we switch tone mapping on and then what we want to do is we want to bring down the saturation to nothing and instantly you've got your monochrome without even leaving and without doing anything uh, you know, other than that simple setting. So once it's monochrome, you can now play with the lighting. So we've got a lighting rig already set up. If you're not sure about lighting, you want more information about how to light in Nomad, look up above. And we've got a video there that um, about, about three point lighting that will really explain what it is I'm doing here and how to get this kind of look. So that's a good video to look at after this one. And I'm just moving the lighting around to try and get a dramatic light from the side. And that has given me a really nice popping, um, what we call a high value. So it's, so it's a really, the blacks are very black and the whites are very white and we've got a good contrast. So it means that it, it, it reads well as an image because the values are right. Now, if you come to the front where the lighting's wrong, it doesn't read as well there because there's no definition. So if you roll the lighting around and you bring the light into the side or like a little bit to the front and the side, you can see it reads a whole lot better straight away. Now, there's two things with, with the monochrome that we want to, that will even improve it even more. So turn, um, turn that back on and then we can come down here and we can sh flip on sharpness. And then have a look at how dramatic that looks with a high degree of sharpness in it. So that definitely gives you some kind of a, you know, like an old horror story kind of look. That's probably too much there. I've probably got it set a little bit too high. But the idea is that you can play with this and try it um, until you get a look that works for you. You see, I've dropped it down a little bit. So there you go. With the lighter moving around, you can get really nice dramatic monochrome pictures just with those few settings there okay so let's try the comic book look so the first thing we need to do is make sure that we're on matcap 
And then we need to get rid of all that lovely texture that we put in. So we'll go like a grayish white color and force paint it. And there you go, it's all white. And now we'll leave the rocks because I just want to show you that what the, what the creature's like. So if it's looking okay like that now, let's go and pick a, 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 um, a matte cap that really works to make this a dramatic looking model. So we've got that one with the gray and the, and the white, maybe not. I'll leave it pinned open actually while we're finding it. So I'll pop a pin there. Um, so let's work through the ones that I've got here. So there's a checker one. That's quite nice. That's given us a nice dramatic look straight away. So better than I expected, actually. I thought that one would be quite weak. So you could get a really nice look with that one. We've done, again, we've done a few videos covering this sort of stuff. So this is really just on a higher res model or a higher quality model now. We're just finding our feet. That looks better there. So that one, as you can spin that one around, it gives you the kind of look we want. That one looks good. So this one is um, very, very black and gray with a little bit of a white highlight on the edge. So you could get some really nice looking stuff there. Um, that, that Again, just you, you, the only way to do this is to experiment with it. And just, you know, whenever you've got something that's got um, a, a, a much more uh, detailed surface, the matte caps look worse. So be careful of that a little bit. Let's go back into our ambient occlusion and we'll stick on. We want a couple of things popping on. We want ambient occlusion back on. And you'll see that that now has shown the creases again really, really well. Um, and I think that was what we were missing really, is that the, 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 the dark areas inside the model just weren't popping. So that would come up with a really nice result or would give you a really nice result. You can at this stage as well change the background. So if I change that to white, you'll see how that really starts to pop. So a lot of it is experimenting. A lot of this I would normally do outside of Nomad or ZBrush and just, you know, experiment with, you know, in Photoshop with different layers. But actually you can do quite a lot and you can get some really good results just by staying inside the program and just learning all of these techniques. You know, these can really make a difference. So let's look at curvature then. So we've got um, in, in one of the later uh, ones that I'm going to talk about is dramatic lighting. And you can see here how dramatic this is. But we don't want to look at the, the lighting so much as the, the surface, but I wanted dark areas. And you'll see why now. So I'm going to go back into my post process. I'll pin it open so you can see it. And I'm going to come down until I get to curvature. And then I'm going to switch that on. Now, curvature here, you've got cavity and bump. So cavity will generally um, enhance the edges of things that are in crevices and bump will generally enhance things that are at the top of crevices or all the things that are coming out. So bump is out, cavity is in. Now, let me just show you what I mean by going silly. Let me just do the cavity, I'll do bright red and the bump, I'll do bright green. And that means you'll be able to see what I'm trying to achieve. Now, that actually looks like chromatic aberration gone crazy. It looks like an 80s, you know, mad, um, some kind of video uh, filter. But if you think about it now, because you've got a lot of really cool surface detail, because you've used lots of brushes, maybe, then you can really affect the surface more because there's more detail around the surface. So, for example, you might want to bring that and, 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 and in fact, in fact, just do the bump, first of all, the outer one, and we'll make it a really subtle green like that. Now, you can go all the way down to dark or you can just bring it a little bit up like that and it gives you a really nice graphical look. And that will give you something that, you know, you, you especially if you've got um, something that's for an illustration, you, I'll zoom right in so you can see. You can get really cool effects just by affecting one of them like that. So if I now go back and do the cavity, and we'll change that to something like um, a really dark, deep purple. In fact, no, go go for the deep, deep red. Like So watch it from a bright red to a really deep red, darker, darker, darker. And now you can just still see the deep red inside it. So that's that's when you're you're using it in a much more subtle way because you're just giving almost a glow in, in your cavities. And again, it can look really dramatic if you get it right. So the you know you've got a nice outline there as well. So much more um stylistic or graphical, 
but very powerful for for a, a lot of things that you know especially especially for anyone who's an illustrator let's just change the background and it might just show you a little bit so i'll go um, with a, a grayish sort of background like this and now you can see it looks very very dramatic um because we you know we've got this really reddish hue we could easily go and change the um, background to a slightly reddish hue like this and again it's like it's reflecting the scene so you're getting a really really nice effect from that curvature so again have a go at that one and see how that affects what you, you know what what your images start looking like so a lot of your um the power in some of these designs will be in the lighting um, I can't stress enough how important lighting is to, to, to a model and it doesn't matter how good of a sculptor you are, it's the lighting that's going to define what it looks like at the, at the end. So one way to really make these things pop and make them dramatic as a piece of artwork is to go for really dramatic lighting. So I'll just show you one way that I, I would do it. So this might seem a bit strange at first but this is a, a great way and quite often a good way to to approach a subject like this. So I go for, first of all, I will turn on, so on the environment, I will turn the HDRI completely down. So that means that there's no lighting coming from the environment whatsoever. And I'll delete all of the lights. And that means we're now a completely blacked out. You can see this, the, the, the uh, grease marks on my screen now because it's completely black. Um, and I've left it a little bit off black on the background so that you can actually see something. I could have gone like this, which is the back, background colour completely black. And that means you can't see anything now. So And obviously that doesn't help me in explaining it to you. So I've gone a, a tiny bit lighter than that. So at least I can see just a, a smidge of the silhouette. So once you've got that, just put one light in that's going to be a backlight. Now, we've got videos. Um, obviously, there's a three-point lighting video that we do, but um, th this, is, is, this is different than three-point lighting because at this stage, all we're doing is going for extremely dramatic lighting. So with that single light, then change it, tap on it, and that spotlight then, we need to drag it out a little bit away from the body and then angle it back to, to the body so that we can see where we're at. And you might have to roll around a little bit until you get it exactly where where you want it to hit the body, because obviously we're you know we're we're just moving it from one direction here. So so you see I'm going right near the body there now, bring it up and out and away. You can see maybe better behind like that, like so. And it's just hitting the side there like that, and then go into that light. Pick the colour that you want. I'll go with a quite a dramatic. Uh, in fact, no, I'll go greeny and maybe just into the greens, and then you want put your your cone angle up a little bit and your softness up a little bit, and then your intensity up quite a lot. Now straight away you can see how dramatic that is, and you can get you can, if you now use your three finger roll, you can come to either side of the back, and you can get really incredibly powerful shots like that before you even go any further that might be that might be enough for what you're trying to achieve so just a single harsh light will give you that really powerful dramatic lighting from that one source and when you've got that right you can then slowly if if needed you can then bring the environment back a little bit so i'm going to bring that exposure back a tiny tiny bit and roll just the hdri around with this See, it's not coming. It's not, there we go. Just bring it back a bit more and a bit more, and maybe even change that that background. Um, change the HDRI to something a bit more, you you know, useful for this kind of look. Maybe not. Certainly not that because that's blown all those colours back out. So maybe something like that, where it's that reddish colour. But that now gives me. If I bring the whole thing round, that's giving me before we even do any post processing. That's given me a super dramatic look for this for this creature or character, whatever it is. Um, and, and, and as I roll it around, you can see every single shot now is giving me like a power shot. There's, there's nothing here that doesn't look good. Um, so if you now go back up to post-process, pop your post-process on, depth of field on, ambient occlusion, 
you know, on but low. We don't want it. Oh, it's doing an auto save. That's why I couldn't do it. And then we want um, curvature off. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and vignette we'll leave on. And there you go for a really, really creepy Resident Evil kind of look. And if you roll that lighting around now, that's how you get the drama into these scenes. Look at the shadow dropping onto the body there. So you can really see how powerful this is. It might look a bit blown out on the on the little um, uh, the overhead camera, but if you look at it from from the just from the iPad screen, you can see that we're getting really creepy, powerful, dramatic lighting. So not a three point light in any way. This is very much just a single point light. And this is like a crack in a doorway opening up or something like that. But it can give you some extremely powerful looks. Now we'll carry on from that one with dramatic lighting and we'll do, in fact, we'll get a really cool shot. So we'll get somewhere that's looking really good. Let's just find this, just get the shading quite right, the, the, the shadow dropping quite nicely. Okay, so about there. Then we'll go in and we'll use what's called tone mapping. So if you come into your post process and switch on tone mapping here, and you've got exposure, contrast, saturation, and we're going to switch on color grading as well. So we can affect the overall color or the red blue green channels so one to make it more dramatic you can pump up the exposure you can you know be careful going down on contrast you want to go up with your contrast and then you can go either up or down with your saturation as you would with any you know 2d program you're basically just playing with your exposure contrast and saturation anyway so and then just you know if needed just knock back one or two and that and that straight away the tone mapping will give you um it's going to give you look look how much redder and how deep the these colors look when you've done something like that and now you can go in and play with your um color grading even in in you know this this would normally be done in another program but now we can bring those reds up we can drop the reds down we can decide on whether we want to bring the greens up a little bit and i'm just putting extra points in where i need them so that i can move the graph around um, you know, obviously be super careful, the, you know, grading is all about subtlety Um, you know, you could really ruin the look of this if you're, if you're not careful, but these are the last things that you would do that, you know, the grading and the tone mapping are the last things to really make your, your model pop right at the end. So go in very, very carefully. Um, and, and, you know, with a combination of all of the things that I've told you from, whether it be monochromatic, which you're not going to talk about here, um, or the comic look, but then, you know, curvature, dramatic lighting and tone mapping are what are going to make your model pop with your lighting. So have a go at that and see what you can come up with on some of your models. A good idea is to go back and try some of your older models and see if you can, you know, get them really singing with this new kind of look. Um, it, you know, you'll get some really, really interesting effects that you hadn't thought about. Thank you for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give us a thumbs up because it helps us get in front of other artists who might like this kind of content. If you're liking this kind of video, then subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And we'll let you know when we're dropping new videos, which is every week. I've dropped a video here on the right that you might be interested in looking at. And don't forget to check out our playlist because we've got plenty of content for you to go and have a look at. Have a great week, everyone.